Well, hello and welcome to the Spirit Safe. My name's Rob. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Now, this is the last review of 2021. And I want to finish on familiar ground because the first uh, whiskey I did this year was a Glen Farkless, uh, the eight-year-old. And then uh, slightly after that, I did the 10 as, uh, as a comparison. Uh, later in the year, the 105 cask strength. And I want to finish with the 12 year old and I'll be comparing this with the 10. So this is the Glen Farkless 12 year old bottled at 43% ABV. The 10 and the eight and 10 are bottled at just 40% ABV. Same uh, packaging scheme. I do quite like this royal blue uh, color. I like this old fashioned uh, label with the slopes, Glen Farkless uh, writing there and uh, Pretty much the same story inside uh, the bottle as well. For this, I paid $56 Canadian in uh, Alberta because I was ordering a few bottles from Alberta and I thought just to bulk up the order, it's time to get a Glen Farkless 12. In BC, it sells for quite a lot more. It sells for about $88, $87 Canadian, which is a huge increase, uh, really, when you think about it. Um, Glen Farkless does just sell at a premium in BC. Um, all whiskies are more expensive in B BC than they are in Alberta, but Glen Farkless for some reason uh, really uh, pushes the boat out with its pricing in BC. Rather, BC pushes its price out, its boat out with the pricing of Glen Farkless. Uh, I've never understood why they they uh, have such a premium on it. Uh, lot number zero nine ten twenty. In case you care. Not many people do. Uh, 700 mil bottle. Uh, yeah, I, I like the, the old fashioned uh, style of the bottle. I hope they never change that. Reassuring a pop of the cork there. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice and fruity. Very full nose on the 12. Mm, lively oak. Some very sweet fruits, slight fudginess, a little bit of caramel. It manages to hint at both being very light on the nose and it's but it's also got a certain weight to it as well. So it's an intriguing mix between a light fruity malty uh, whiskey but you can tell that there's a weight to the spirit now now that we're up at the 43 rather than 40 i know it's not a high abv but glen Farkless does have quite a weighty spirit and yeah, very inviting because of the the mix between the light fruits and the um and the sort of more weighty spirit so it's multi a sherried nose, making up apples, pears, ginger, grapes, a little bit of sour pineapple, slight wisp of smoke maybe, and that signature Glen Farkless um, soapiness. Coming across a bit more carbolic at the moment, but often you do pick up a, a perfumed soap on the nose. Some lime leaves, a little twist of lemon, some slightly cooling um, wintergreen or um, menthol. Quite a bit of honey. Sorry, my nose is really itchy today. I don't know why. Plump raisins, spices, a little twist of lime or something greenish in there. Vanilla, caramel, a little bit of butter fudge. A 
twist to black pepper and pear drops, those uh, old fashioned candies that got a bit of an acetone uh, smell to them. Hmm. Lively, inviting nose on this. Mm. Palette, sweet and sour, high pineapple, banana, getting that dense, slightly weighty spirit with a nice bouncy malt to it. Some spices, quite a lot of cinnamon going on there. A bit of a savoury note as it moves on to the finish. Vanilla, dense fudge, sweet, spicy. Uh, kind of floral notes as well, caramel, quite a quite an, quite a bit of sherry on the palate. Very good, sort of a like signature Glenfarclas. I'm going to add a little bit of water, just less than a teaspoonful because it's only at forty three percent. And it's not particularly hot on the palate. Hmm. That's brought out a lot more fudge. And just cut with a, a very tart apple. So picking up the lemon juice, lime peel, tart apple. Gooseberry. Honey, menthol. waxy citrus, oranges, and again a little more soap back to the kind of um, vanilla perfume soap. Orange oil, hmm, and spices. Mm -hmm. palette now. Sweet, lovely cereal malt, greenish vanilla, creme brulee, honey, barley sugar, dried fruit, candied ginger, and more fresh mints coming through on the nose now. The finish is a vanilla, soapiness, a dense honey, wintergreen, smoke and oak, honey, fudge and bitter orange. So time to compare with the 10. I'll just do a brief comparison. I kept a small bottle of the 10 year old. When I'm done this review, I will replace this 10 with uh, a bit of the 12 and then maybe next year we'll do the 15 and compare that with the 12. I'm really sure what to make of that now. It's got much more of a greenish note to it. But the sherry, I think. Hmm. Yeah, the sherry's coming through. Bramble fruits, apple and pear. And then the oak is below it. The 12, much more banana, caramel, and oak. Ten seems a lot younger than the 12. By which I mean, yeah, it's almost more spirity just despite having a lower ABV. Picking up a kind of greenish ginger on the 10.
and then the 12 much more oaky palette on the the 10 bit of black pepper and um, ginger going on there and the the it just sort of falls away in the finish whereas the 12 much much thicker mouthfeel much more staying power as it moves on to the finish see it's hanging around on the palette way longer than the 10 and I've added water to the 12 and I didn't to the 10 hmm yeah I think the 12 definitely gets it the 12 is the more advanced malt it's the more accomplished uh, malt between the 10 and the 12 uh, so the t for me I would spend the extra on the 12 uh, but the 8 and 10 were, were interesting for me to try uh, I think really the the 12 is where the where the regular um, range begins so for me 12 is uh, is is the better of the of the 8 10 and 12 okay I hope you enjoyed the review hope to hope you join me again next year until then, stay safe and uh, see you soon. Goodbye.